Today I'm going to show you guys a super cool new power user Python trick that all the pros are really excited about. And this is called an F string. Now, if you're coming from any kind of Python background, you've probably seen different ways that pros handle strings, names, uh, titling, like all this kind of stuff. When we're working on these big Python projects, we're going to have to wrangle these kind of names. So I'm going to go ahead and make a text dat here. And I'm going to talk you through some of the old ways you've probably seen, some of the ways that maybe you didn't know about, and then all of a sudden, this cool new way that is taking everybody by storm. So let me open up my text editor here. And probably something that you have seen is the original way that you probably learned to make more advanced strings. So I'm going to make a simple example here. I'm going to make a variable called dessert. And I'm going to make the dessert a cake. And I'm gonna make another variable called flavor. And I'm gonna make this one apple. Now let's say I wanted to put together a string that said something like, I love the, and then let's assume that in this underscore is gonna go our flavor. And then we'll type flavor of, and then our second underscore here is going to be the type of dessert. Very simple, I'm sure on any project that you've done with any kind of Python or API data or even just kind of customization for users, you've already done this, if not way more advanced. Now in the first version of this that you've probably ever done if you did you know, your, your beginner Python course, you probably did something aligned the lines of this. You separate each part of the string and then you do what's called a string concatenation. And that's where you basically add strings together as if it was math. And what the adding does is basically just put them up next to each other. So what you could do is say, I love the, and the first string here, put a plus sign, and then in the second area, you would put something like our flavor variable, and then plus flavor of, and then we would do similar here, and the string again, plus this is gonna be our dessert. Now, quickly you're gonna see why this is not how anyone ever does it, because all of a sudden, it's very easy to mess one of these opening and closing of these little sub strings. You can also see it's annoying because if I go ahead and print something like this, I'm gonna open my text port here. I'm already running into issues where I have to fix spacing because it isn't automatically handled. So I have to do things like make sure that before the end of this string there's a space, before the start of this string there's a space, similarly here. So you're getting these really long, hard to manage strings. You got to deal with, you know, variable spaces. And that's before we even talk about, you know, doing op references and making Python scripts that you're going to run later. And then you have to manage double quotations and single quotations. And it just becomes a right mess. So probably a lot of time when you've looked up things on the internet that are regarding Python and strings, you may have seen something that looks like this, which was the previous, you know, two generations ago, I would say most popular method. But if you've been on Stack Overflow, you've definitely seen something like this. You could say, I love the, and then you would have seen something like this, percentage sign S, and then taste of percentage sign S again. And then outside of this, you would see another <laughs> percentage sign. And then you would see flavor, and then dessert, inside of a set of parentheses. And you can tell as I was laughing, it kind of gets a little bit silly when you start dropping these percentage signs and the S's, but you could see this is already a much, much better way to do things. So like if we print this, first go, we got it right. And it just becomes so much easier because you're basically putting in these symbols as placeholders. And then what happens is this other magical percentage sign symbol will allow you to take items from your set here and kind of just drop them one by one in the correct place. Now this was really good for a long time for people because it's definitely easier to read, easier to manage, less of this kind of like string opening and closing business, but it was very limited because you could only do one for one matchings in order for most of the cases. And it still can become hard to manage because you still have to have a separate set of kind of symbols and then a separate set of the items that you wanted to put in, not ideal. Now this did get upgraded uh, in later versions of Python 2, I believe, and it started to become a bit more popular in Python 3, and it's probably what you're seeing in most pros workflows these days, 
which is the format that's kind of like this. So let me open up another set of quotes here. I love the, and then you've probably seen these curly brackets. And these function very similarly to the percentage S that we just saw where you can say, I love the, put a, pl a placeholder there, flavor of placeholder. Now the way we go in and kind of feed things into these placeholders is what we can do is say dot format after our string. And then very similarly to what we saw before, we put in our variables that we want to feed in. Now, if you print this, perfect. Now, the cool thing about this is that it offers a lot of flexibility because let's say for instance, we want to change the order of these for some reason. Well, instead of having to go and deal with moving all of our data points around, we can actually just assign an index to them. So by default, you know, our first placeholder is going to grab the first thing, our second placeholder is going to grab the second thing, but we could also invert that. I could put a one here, so that means this is all of a sudden going to grab dessert, and this is going to grab index zero. And then what we could do here is also go and say maybe we want to assign these by name instead of doing them by index. So we could say, okay, well, flavor goes here, dessert's going to go here, and then very similar to how you've seen with maybe some other arguments and functions, we could say, okay, well, flavor equals flavor, and dessert equals dessert. And now we're assigning them not just by index, but also by name. So if that whole set of data kind of got flipped around, got changed, something's happening with them, we can move these around wherever we want and we don't have to worry about any kind of orderings. These kind of features were pretty cool. Now you can still see though that we're getting back a little bit to, we're almost regressing. These are starting to become long again. They're starting to become hard to manage. And this is where these F strings really come into play. So if I was gonna make an F string out of this, what I would do is first type a letter F, just straight up type F, then open up a string here, either double quotation or single quotation. You can see the F becomes this blue F. And then I would do very similar. I could start typing my string, I love the, and I'm gonna put flavor here. Taste of, and then let's put our dessert here. <clears throat> now this is really where it's gonna blow your mind because unlike the you know percentage sign method or the string formatting, we actually don't need to put anything else here because the F string is smart enough to use the namespace of our actual variables in the project and just straight up take flavor from our variable here, put it in the string, take dessert from you know, our variable at the top of the script, put it in the place of the string, and that's it, that's all we have to do. So I could go ahead and print this. And Bob is your uncle, just like that. Now I know that's gonna be like a nuclear bomb going off for a lot of people who've been doing the percentage sign method for a long time or the string formatting. And I can tell you a lot of folks are excited because you can see not only is this easy to read, easy to manage, but you can manage the data in the same way that you would manage any other variable. So if I just want to change this variable, I can do it here. I could even rename the variable. I know there's only one place I have to rename it. I don't have to worry about some dot formatting or another set of data ordering it. Super clean and simple. Now, even on top of that is that unlike the previous percentage sign and string formatting methods, these are actually dynamic and they get interpreted in place before they're added to the actual string. And what I mean by that is you can actually add more Python stuff that happens dynamically in here. So let's say for example, I want to do something like take the dessert name and make it fully uppercase. Well, I could do it at my kind of data layer here, but maybe it only needs to be uppercase in the string. Maybe I don't want to uppercase the full name here because I'm using it somewhere else. Well, I could just go to this and type in dot upper and use the strings built in upper formatting to make that all capitals. So this is not just a straight up one for one swap. This is a dynamic piece of Python that we can work with here. And what's really cool is let's say we put a number in here. So maybe I'll say a number of desserts and I say something like number five. I could even add to this. I want, let's say num desserts and then we'll put our desserts here again. Let's print this, make sure it's working. Oh, 
I think I spelled desserts wrong. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, desserts. Great, so that's working. Now the cool thing is because it's a dynamic, I mean, we could even just do straight up math on here. We could do our number of desserts times five. All of a sudden we got, I want 25 cake, which is, when, if I'm in a mood for I want 25 cake, I'm also not speaking proper English. But you can see here how exciting this is, because not only do you have the benefits of this being so much cleaner, so much easier to manage, but you also have the ability to do dynamic Python work right on your string in place without having to mess with a second set of variables, without having these really long run on dot format strings that go on forever. This is a cool new technique you should definitely learn to use. And it really is as simple as putting a lowercase f at the beginning of the quotation mark and then basically using it as if you were using the string formatting. Enjoy. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.